Hello everyone and welcome to Nettle. My name is Sava and today we're going to continue our journey down the dividend discount model, a valuation technique that uses dividends to value stocks. Last time when we were talking about historical growth rates we encountered a very very interesting problem. For some stocks, in our case Intel Corp, the historical dividend growth rate was higher than the required rate of return and thus the dividend discount model, the logic of discounted cash flows, was unapplicable as one of the assumptions that the discounted cash flows formula makes is that the series of discounted cash flows is convergent, that is the discounted cash flows decrease over time. In the case when historical growth rate or growth rate in general is higher than the required rate of return, then the cash flows increase at a higher rate than they are discounted. So the series does not have a finite sum. So the model thus is unapplicable. How to deal with this issue? Well, one of the assumptions that we can make further on is that the historical growth rate that we observe in case of companies like Intel Corp or even Royal Dutch Shell, when average historical growth rates are very, very high or unstable, as we see in case of those two companies, we can derive a sustainable growth rate from corporate fundamentals. And today, uh, I'm going to show you how to calculate the sustainable growth rate and how to apply it for the dividend discount model. To do that, we need to get some more fundamental data on the companies that we are trying to value. For those three companies, I have got the fundamental data from the corporate reporting on the total common equity at the start of the year and in the end of the year, the net income for common shareholders, uh, net income for shareholders after preferred dividends and minority, as well as the total dividends that the company has paid. How to apply those to derive the sustainable growth rate? Well, that's what I'm going to cover right now. Um, the logic of sustainable growth rate is to determine at what rate the company can grow its own assets, its total book equity, by using just the resources available within the company without attracting leverage. Because obviously the firm cannot just leverage itself to infinity. The company can't attract infinite debt. The company can't just grow indefinitely using loans. So the only source of growth that is infinitely sustainable is reinvestment. When the company retains some of the earnings it makes to expand its operations, to reinvest into its own assets, to increase its capability to generate further earnings for investors and so on and so forth. So overall, this estimate of the sustainable growth rate is equal to the return on common equity times the retention ratio. So the company can grow faster if it retains more earnings and the company can grow faster if it just makes more. So to calculate the return on common equity, we need to divide net income for common shareholders by the average total common equity at a particular year. To calculate the average total common equity, we just need to find out the average of total common equity at the start of the year and at the end of the year. So start plus end divided by two. And we can drag this formula around and apply it for all three companies. And the return on common equity is just net income for common shareholders divided by average total common equity. So how many pounds does one pound of common equity make within a year. So for uh, Daigeo, the return on common equity is around 34.5%. And we can apply it for all three companies. And we can see that the return on equity varies substantially across companies because they have different business models, different levels of risk, and 
in general, different assets yield different types of return. And also, return on common equity obviously depends on the leverage that company makes. If a lot of assets are owned by the company because of the high levels of debt it currently holds, then the return on equity will be higher. So those are the factors that might influence return on common equity. So now we have to calculate the retention ratio. The retention ratio is the proportion of company's earnings that a company leaves within itself, that the company does not distribute among its shareholders as dividends, that the company has available for future reinvestment. So naturally, the retention ratio is equal 1 minus the dividend payout ratio. And the dividend payout, payout ratio is very, very easy to calculate. It's just the total dividends paid out divided by the net income that is available for shareholders after preferred dividends and minority interest are accounted for. So, without further ado, dividend payout ratio is equal to total dividends divided by net income after preferred and minority. And uh, payout ratio is also quite variable across companies because generally companies that are in high growth stage that have a lot of opportunities to expand prefer to pay out less so they have more funds available to reinvest into the expansion of the current operations while companies at maturity that don't need much funds to grow to sustain the current operations might prefer to distribute a greater proportion of their earnings as dividends. And we can see just that. Intel Corp, that is growing at 12% a year, remember, distributes only around 26% of its earnings as dividends. While Royal Dutch Shell, a well-established energy company, um, distributes more than 60% of its earnings as dividends. So the retention ratio is equal to just 1 minus the dividend payout ratio and we can calculate it for all our three companies and now we have everything we need to get the sustainable growth rate and the sustainable growth rate as I already discussed is the return on common equity times retention ratio and we can see that those three companies by using only the funds that are available from within the company can grow at around 16%, around 4%, and around 21%, respectively. And now we can apply the same logic that we did with historical growth rates. We can just apply the sustainable growth rate to figure out the future dividend that we'll get next year if we buy this stock today, and using the assumption that the dividends will grow at the sustainable growth rate indefinitely, we can figure out the fair value of this particular stock. The future dividend is just equal to the most recent dividend times 1 plus the sustainable growth rate. And we can use the formula that we all already know, just dividing future dividend by required rate of return minus sustainable growth rate and applying it for all three companies. We see that the sustainable growth rate is very, very high for Diageo and Intel Corp. It's much higher than their respective required rate of return. So we get bizarre negative results for those two companies in case of the sustainable growth rate. But it just means that the sustainable growth rate, constant growth model is simply unapplicable for those two companies. In case of Royal Dutch Shell though, the sustainable growth rate is plausible. It's plausible that this company will grow at 4% per year indefinitely. And uh, using this value for growth rate, we can derive the fair price of Royal Dutch Shell at, at £32.70, pence, reasonably greater, greater than its current market value of £22.44. Pence. And sustainable growth rate is more applicable for Royal Dutch Shell than the historical growth rate, as we already acknowledged um, in the last video that the dividend growth path for Royal Dutch Shell is unstable. At some years, dividends grow a lot. At some years, they grow a little. And in some years, they even decrease. 
So for Royal Dutch Shell, the sustainable um, growth rate, coastal growth model is arguably the most applicable. But what can we do for the likes of Intel Corp, whose historical growth rate is very, very high, whose sustainable growth rate is just as high or even higher, and the constant growth model is unapplicable? Well, we will talk about the two period dividend discount model and how to apply it next time. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, leave a like under this video if you found it helpful, and in the comments below, please state which videos on business, finance, or economics you want to see next. Thank you very much, and until next time.